Hello world. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be building a custom cursor interaction. I got some inspiration for this um, interaction from a comment that I got asking me to sort of make a tutorial on how to build a very specific custom cursor interaction and this is what um, I sort of ended up building or what I got from that comment and this is my interpretation of it. Okay. So right here, as you can see, our custom cursor is just one giant circle, okay? And how it works is that it acts as a mask for this image that's in the background. So the image that you see is sort of positioned in the background, and the custom cursor just sort of moves around it, and it acts as a mask, okay? So basically what that means is it's only capturing some part of the image every single time. So it's never going to capture um, the full image, okay? at least not until we click on it. So when we click on it, what happens is that the sort of custom uh, cursor circle expands to take up the full entire screen, okay? So now, as you can see, we can see the whole image. But if we click once more, the size of the cursor, again, goes all the way back down to the original size, and it turns into a mask yet again, okay? So this is the interaction that we're going to be building today. just switch over to my Webflow tab. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be building is that sort of that black background that you see, okay? So that's going to have a div, uh, a class of main, okay? So it's going to have um, a width of 100% and a height of 100VH, okay? And it's just going to have a background color of black. Now, after this, I'm going to create my cursor wrapper. Now, this is going to not be a part of main itself, but it will be um, another div. Okay, so this is going to be called Cursor Wrapper. Now, Cursor Wrapper, if you've watched any of my other videos on custom cursor interactions, you've seen this sort of structure um, in those videos before, so this is going to be pretty similar if you already watched those. So this is just going to have a width of 100% v uh, and a height of 100VH, very similar to the main. Um, this is also going to be set to flex, vertical, and center aligned. And then we want this cursor wrapper, wrapper to always be sitting on top of any content in our page. So I'm going to make sure to set it to be position fixed, and I'm going to hit top left. Okay? Perfect. Now, inside of here, I'm going to drop in our actual cursor. So this is going to have a class of, you guessed it, cursor. So this is also going to be pretty simple. It's going to have a width of 20 EM and a height of the same, because remember we're trying to create a circle, and circles have the same width and height. Now the, um, right now, to sort of show that it is a circle, we need to give it the rounded edges. So for that, I'm gonna change the border radius and make it 50%. Now you can't really see that it has a border radius, but if I add a background color to it, like this sort of gray, you can see that it is a circle, okay? So that's, oh, not that that's not what I meant to delete. Okay, so it's still gonna have that border radius of 50%. And, okay, now uh, the next thing to create is the actual sort of image that goes around in the background, okay? So for that, I'm going to go ahead and drop yet another div inside of the cursor, and I'm going to call this cursor image, okay? So this is going to have a width of 100 VW, so that's viewport width, and a height of 100 VH, okay? Now, uh, we want to position this... Um, sort of, uh, that so that it takes up the entire width of the screen, right? And while it technically should be, what's happening is that it's sort of set um, in relative to the cursor, but we want it to be taking up the entire thing. So I'm just going to make sure to hit position absolute, and I'm going to um, sort of move it up to the top left like that. Now for this, I'm just going to change my background image to be the image that I want. So this is just a picture, and I'm going to hit cover and just center it like that. Okay, perfect. Now, um, to make sure that we have this, again, sort of mask, we just need to add overflow hidden to our cursor. This, So this, um, remember our cursor has a width of 20 EM and a height of 20 EM, and so we want it, everything sort of be inside of that. Now the reason this isn't working is because we don't have our cursor itself to set to position absolute. There we go. So if we set our cursor itself to be positioned absolutely, you can see that it works. But it also messes up the cursor image, right? This cursor image is now um, sort of set to the cursor instead of being set to the whole entire cursor wrapper, right? So for that, all we need to do is just make sure that everything is set to auto. 
um, on the cursor image. And then on the cursor itself, we want to make sure that everything is set to flex and vertical and center aligned, just like that. So now if we look at it, we see our, um, and we take off the overflow hidden, you can see that our image is taking up this entire width, right? But when we add the overflow hidden, it's sort of capturing the only moment that you see currently, okay? Now, um, if we hit preview, you can see that nothing obviously is happening here. We haven't set up an interaction yet. So let's go ahead and set up that interaction that's gonna create the cursor to sort of move across the screen, okay? So for that, I'm gonna set a page trigger animation. So this is gonna have a mouse move in viewport. I'm gonna call this cursor move, okay? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna grab the cursor and the cursor, um, when the mouse position and the mouse X, so that's the horizontal position, is at 0%. So that means that when it's all the way to the left of the screen. Well, when that happens, when the mouse is all the way there, we want the our cursor element to also be all the way over there. So for that, I'm gonna make sure that it's set to an X value of negative 50 VW. Now when we were on the opposite side of the screen, so when our mouse is all the way here, for example, we want the cursor to do the exact opposite. We want it to go to 50 VW instead of negative 50 VW. Okay, um, now uh, we're gonna add the same to our mouse Y, but instead of manipulating the X values, we're gonna manipulate the Y values. So when our mouse is all the way at 0%, Okay, we want, so that's when it's all the way up here. Then we want the X value to be negative 50 VH. So VH is viewport height, while VW is viewport width, right? So I'm moving my uh, mouse all the way up when it's at 0%, and I'm moving it all the way down when it's at 100%, okay? Like that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the cursor image, okay? Actually, let's just hit save and let's see how things look right now, okay? So now, what you see is happening here is that the cursor image is moving with the cursor, okay? And we don't want that to happen. Uh, why? Because, again, the cursor is acting as a mask for this image, right? It's not supposed to be something that you carry around with it. So for that, I'm going to grab oh, the page trigger yet again. And um, as you can see right here, like the cursor image, uh, Webflow cleverly shows us, so the cursor image is moving with the cursor itself. So for that, I'm just gonna grab the cursor image and in my uh, mouse actions, so right now you can see that the cursor is moved to negative 50 VW, right? Well, we're gonna do the exact opposite for the cursor image. We're just gonna move it 50 VW, okay? So here the cursor is set to uh, 50 VW. Well, now we're gonna do the opposite and move it negative 50 VW, okay? So if I just, oh, make sure that that's added to the cursor image. So now for this one, I'm just gonna move it negative 50 VW, okay? Actually, I wanna make sure that these are selecting just um, the class like that. Okay, perfect. So the cursor image, now if we hit live preview, you can see that as we sort of move across the screen in this way, the cursor image is moving um, in opposite direction to the cursor itself. Now I'm just gonna add these same styles to our curse, um, mouse at Y positions, right? So right here, the cursor is moving negative 50 VH, and we're just gonna move it 50 VH. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one right here, negative 50 VH. So now, if we hit save and we sort of preview this, there we go, we have our image masking, okay? So it's perfectly moving depending on our X and our Y position, like that, okay. Now the next and final part um, is to create a very simple trigger that when we click, it expands and takes up the whole entire page. When we click one more time, it sort of decreases its size, okay? So for that, I'm just gonna go again to my, grab my cursor, and I'm gonna go to the interactions panel here, and I'm gonna call this cursor click, okay? So, or really I wanna call this cursor click grow, because it's growing in size, right? So for this, I'm just gonna grab the size option and I'm gonna set this as initial state. So initially, we want the width to be 20 EM for the width and 20 EM for the height, okay? But then we want it to grow. So we want it to grow to, let's say 300 EM, just to make sure that it's always taking up the full screen and more. Now, um, if we hit save, you can see that it happens very quickly. We wanna sort of um, make the interaction last a little bit longer. So I'll give it a two second duration. Now if we see, okay, way better. So now I'm gonna hit save. 
and I'm gonna do um, add another click okay and this is gonna be called cursor click shrink okay because the first thing that we click as you can see it grows and it takes up the full sort of page but when we say click the second time it sort of goes back down in size right so let's go ahead and call this cursor click shrink okay and here all that's gonna happen is we're gonna grab the size and just make sure that the size is all the way back down to 20 em like it was previously and make sure that the duration is again set to two seconds so now if we hit save and i click on any part okay so it takes up the full screen and if i click again and it goes back down perfect okay so that's it for this interaction i hope you guys enjoyed it um, i am going to be releasing a little bit of a more difficult version of this same interaction um, very soon so stay tuned for that subscribe um, turn on the notification bell comment down below like this video and yeah that's pretty much it see you guys next time bye